Welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, created and hosted by Scott Knudsen, to explore the crossroads of horses and business. Now here's your host, Scott Knudsen. Hi, and welcome to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Scott Knudsen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Whether you're listening to us on the radio, on KCAA, the NBC affiliate out in California, or watching our podcast on one of our many platforms, we really appreciate you tuning into the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Today, we have a great guest, um, lots of different stories, and it's going to be a fun show, so thanks for joining us. Today, we have Kyla Jones on, and Kyla is a communication liaison for the American Quarter Horse Association. She was featured in Cowgirl Magazine 30 Under 30, and she was Miss Rodeo New Mexico 2017. So, Kyla, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Oh, we're going to have fun. Um, this <laughs> yes. hour is just going to fly by. So thanks for being on the show. So uh, let's jump right in. So when you were growing up in New Mexico, did you know horses was going to be as big a part of your life as it is? Honestly, I always knew I wanted to be involved. It was just a matter of how far involved can I get myself before somebody stops me? And nobody has yet. So that's, that's <laughs> good news, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That is great. Yeah, they're always trying to stop me. We just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So so when did you start riding? What age? I actually, I actually didn't grow up um, in a horse family. So my grandparents, long before I ever came along, had sold the farms and the ranches. Um, my dad's an electrical contractor. My mom's an entrepreneur um, and owns her own business. And then with me, I got stuck on the pony rides at the county fair and mom and dad thought it'd be cheaper to just buy me a horse instead of paying much on the rides. I, they were horrifically wrong, but I'm so glad that they were because I was hooked at about five years old. Um, really started showing at 13 and have never stopped from there. So, so when you're growing up, you're riding reining horses. Can you describe how you got into reining and what is a reining horse? So I actually grew up on show horses, um, like the horsemanship, pleasure, showmanship. And I had always had um, coaches and trainers tell me that I rode better faster. And I grew up in an area that has a lot of rodeo cowboys um, and a lot of barrel racing and that kind of thing. So the next closest thing that I could get my hands on was a reining horse, tried it out and then was hooked ever since. Because it, in my opinion, it was the perfect blend of the pattern work and then speed is just it was very addicting yeah that, that's so fun that's so fun so what yes. was it like getting on your first reining horse did I mean they can tell you it's going to spin it's going to go fast but did you really realize how how cool it was no I had no <laughs> idea how addicting that could be I remember thinking like this can't be that much different I mean I've ridden horses for forever it it, sh it shouldn't be that different but the moment you hit that first slide or that first spin it's well, I, I gotta keep doing that yeah. and just continue on oh that's so fun so so in Yellowstone they're riding a lot of rain and horses so when you're watching it are you critiquing them a little bit I oh no if anything <laughs> I am a fan of the horses more than anything else of the show so I'm like oh my gosh that horse looks like a wimpy or this one looks yeah, like yeah. all these different horses and I I've always been a big fan of horses and have loved seeing them in the media and seeing where they can be shared with people. Because right. I mean, everybody's got a little bit of that desire to be a cowboy, surely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So while you're growing up in, in the raining, in your raining horses, you're also doing pageants, beauty pageants. Yes, so, rodeo queen pageants specifically. Yeah, yes, rodeo. yes. So, can you tell somebody? Maybe they're listening to us on KCA or watching us. What is a rodeo pageant? Yeah. So, the goal of rodeo queens is they're supposed to be the ambassadors of rodeo um, to answer all of the questions that people who might not be involved with rodeo would have about the sport, would have about the lifestyle, mm -hmm. and it's that blend of beauty and brains with a little bit of actually not a little bit of horsemanship, a lot of bit of horsemanship thrown in there too, um, to actually compete at the pageant. And it's not just a one day deal and then you're done and you move on with your life. It's you hit that pageant, you get that title. And even if you don't get that title, you're seen as an ambassador for the sport from then on out. Um, and your job is to go to different rodeos, answer questions, um, assist with stock contractors, 
helping the back shoots, ride horses. It's it's a full time job, especially for those state title holders. Wow. Well, which you were one, New Mexico, which is so yes. cool. So how yes. long did you do uh, the pageants? I actually competed in my first pageant at seven years old. Um, it was actually my eighth birthday turning because I remember being so excited because it was my birthday and I got to spend it at a rodeo and it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> and I did it for about 14 years. Oh, um, wow. Everything from Little Miss Rodeo New Mexico all the way to Miss Rodeo New Mexico in 2017. So saw it oh, through. Wow. Wow, congratulations. So Thank so you. what what was that like when you, you were crowned Miss Rodeo New Mexico? What was that? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people watching right now that couldn't imagine. It was a lifelong dream and something that again I knew I always wanted to be involved with horses. That was just another way to continue to be involved with horses and to share horses with other people. Um, and especially those who might not get to be around a horse all the time. So yeah. To get that opportunity to travel across the United States and to share that and to visit different rodeos and to connect with more people that were like me, it, it really was the coolest blessing that you never know how awesome it is until you're in it and then it's over and you're like, man, that was so much fun and it's not something that you get to repeat and once right. in a lifetime. Absolutely. So, so a lot of travel, I would assume. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> my travel schedule wasn't even as full as some of the other girls um, that were a part of my year as well. I tra probably traveled close to 200 days out of the year. Oh, my um, goodness. That I had year. No idea. Yes. Uh, I actually did the bulk of my traveling in the state of New Mexico, though, at New Mexico sanctioned PRCA rodeos. And then I did a couple out of state and I did, um, I'm trying to think how many in Texas. I would travel quite a bit in the Texas Panhandle because at the time I was also interning at the American Quarter Horse Association. So um, busy. Yes, that was a very, very busy year, but it was a very good year. So, so when you were hauling, did you have to haul your own horses when you were, when you were the queen or did you already have a horse there? It just depended. Um, so anywhere in state, I would always haul my own horse. But if it was out of state and I would get in touch with the different radio committees and see if they were able to provide a horse, or a lot of times, a lot of the girls um, would host us if you went to their home state. So for instance, we went to, um, oh, the name's escaping me, Rodeo in Oklahoma, um, Guyman Frontier, uh, Guyman Pioneer Days, Pioneer Days. We had 17 girls in one house because that's when a giant oh. ice storm took out all the power lines. So all of our host homes, they didn't have power or water. So there was only one house left and we had 17 rodeo queens taking over these poor people's homes and they were so gracious, but it was a full house with all of us. Oh, I bet that was fun though, you know? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you could share a hairspray and I'll miss my <laughs> curling iron. I think by the end of it, there was a pile of things that we had all left because by the time we were time ready to leave the rodeo, it's midnight. Some of us had to fly out first thing in the morning to the next one. I had to run back home for a horse show. We took a picture of all the things that were left behind. And there was like tape, cause we would tape our hats down, um, a thousand bobby pins, a curling iron, a hairbrush. I mean, who knows what else was in there. And I'm like, oh, they forgot all the stuff. The curling iron was mine. And I looked at the picture, like, that's what I get for, for <laughs> talking. Like I had everything, but. <laughs> oh man. Oh goodness. So, so that's one of the tricks, right? Tape the hat. Yes, um, as the saying goes, and as more, it's it's morbid, but if your hat comes off, your head better be in it in the arena. It's, you don't <laughs> yes. lose your hat. That's yeah, that's terrible. A big no, no. You yes. don't do that. <laughs> yes, Abs <laughs> absolutely. So, so, um, so when you're traveling so much, how did you keep your schedule? Because you're rain, you're you're still riding rain and horses. You're entering QHA, and then you're 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 doing your pageant. So, how did you? schedule yourself because so many people are so busy and, and that's a tough deal to learn how to do or to continue to do it what was your secret sure honestly it's all a matter of perspective and people like to say don't bite off more than you can chew but you're not going to get full if you just nibble forever yeah. and ever and just it. yeah bite off and get it done and if you like it it's not work and being yeah. around horses is not work I, I mean it it is but it's not 
it doesn't drain you like some of the other things that you have to do, like maybe doing your taxes. Yeah, that's draining. I don't do that. That's why I got married. But, but working <laughs> the horses and riding the horses, that's not work. That's fun. Yeah, absolutely. That's so cool that you were able to do that and travel so much and see, make all those memories. So what was a fun, give us a fun behind the scenes story outside of the house, maybe in the arena with a horse when you're on, when you're going to your oh, events. Goodness. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm sitting here trying to think. I think probably my favorite memories is I um, hauled a horse to Prescott, Arizona for the oldest rodeo over there. Mm -hmm. That is one that I picked out um, as a little kid that I'd wanted to do that one when I was Miss Rodeo New Mexico because Miss Rodeo Arizona that year was so sweet and so kind and she gave me an invitation and I'm just a little 19 year old kid thinking this is the coolest thing ever. Like this is not, nothing's going to top Miss Rodeo Arizona inviting me to her rodeo back home in Arizona. So I had marked it as a little kid that if I ever get to be Miss Rodeo New Mexico, I want to go to Prescott. So me and my grandmother and my little brother all loaded up to go to this rodeo. And we haul, I think it was close to eight hours from where I'm from in Clovis, New Mexico. And I had previously hauled from Amarillo from college, still going to college at Canyon in West Texas, um, loaded up, loaded up the horse, got to Prescott. And that arena was one of the coolest arenas I ever got to do hot laps and flags. And there were so many girls there, the crowd screaming and going wild. And there's one picture um, of a little girl who had snuck out of her mom's arms came up to the edge of the arena and you could tell that she was not supposed to be down there because mama was in the background running towards her. <laughs> and she was just trying to get as close as she could. And my, like, I know what this little girl's feeling. She had climbed up all the way to the top rail um, of the rodeo arena and was hanging off the side. And oh. I have a picture of me like waving at her and smiling and you can just see the teeny tiny little girl waving. That's probably one of my favorite oh, memories. How sweet is that? It was that too is... fun. That is so cool. Well, I wonder what she's doing now. You know, you, you uh, made an impression. You planted a seed, you know. So I was about say, if she's, she's doing anything, I'm pretty sure she's riding horses now. Absolutely, doing hot laps in the arena. <laughs> you know, that's cool. That's cool. So so you went to, um, where, where'd you go to college? I think you went. So I started school at um, New Mexico State University in 2014, and I was a part of their equestrian program. Um, and was on the reigning team. Okay. The program was actually cut two years later in 2016. And at that point in time, I had started my internship at EQHA and really didn't want to leave. So I, I called up the advisor over at WT. I was like, will my credits transfer? And he said, close enough. I'm like, I can work with that. So I transferred and finished out my degree over at West Texas A&M in Canyon, Texas. Oh, that's so wonderful. So we're, what's Canyon near? in texas is uh, there a big town or just so somebody might not know where it is yes so it is just south of amarillo amarillo okay. texas okay so it's close to the headquarters there, yes very very close so i was actually i'm um, going to school and continuing to intern at eqaj i would get out of class and book it up the highway definitely got pulled over a couple of times <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i got a couple of tickets but it would make it in to go to work and it was awesome. It was really, really awesome. And I'm very thankful for that time and getting the opportunity to not only be able to work through college and to have the time to do that and to make money, but also to do what I really, really wanted to do. And that was so cool. So to cool. work there. So I think I read somewhere that you you were judging horses at, at, at college too. Weren't you part of the horse yes. judging team? Yes, yes, I was. I just, I had a very, very full year in 2017. Um, it was Miss Rodeo New Mexico school interning. And then I actually um, flew out to Miss Rodeo America from a judging contest at the NRHA reigning horse, reigning judging contest. Um, flew from Oklahoma to get to Miss Rodeo America. So it was just a boom, 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 all wow. the fun things all at once. Wow. Goodness gracious. So what, what put you into horse judging? What, what, just I, I know your natural passion for horses but is that what it was or did you want to do something a little bit different than reining? So it really inspired that um, I actually rode with Terry Thompson back when I was a youth kiddo and he is um, a carded NRHA judge, um, AQHA judge, uh, all the fun things and then he's also in the NRHA Hall of Fame and he told me that if I wanted to rein I had to properly know how to score every maneuver and I was not allowed to rein wow. until I could judge a class because he said 
if you're going to play a game, you don't just start fiddling around on the board. You need to know the rules and you need to know how to be successful at the game you're playing. And as a kid, I'm like, that's, that's boring. I just want to go slide <laughs> and go spin, but it, it made such a difference. And I feel like that's why I pursued it and I fell in love with it because I understood what I was doing and I, I had a clear plan on how to get better as a competitor and as a horsewoman. So uh, wow. he inspired that and introduced me to a lot of other fantastic people in the industry. Um, Dr. John Pipkin is actually mm -hmm. my coach over at WT and he is one of the most wonderful humans ever and honestly one of the most intelligent and knowledgeable and just a fantastic coach and it was really awesome to get to learn from him man that is so great scott will be right back with more hi i'm scott knutson host of the cowboy entrepreneur show today we're going to talk about something i'm really passionate about those that know me know i love my coffee those that don't now you know i do and we've been working on this for several months and we we wanted to get it just right and we don't put our name on anything unless we feel 100% certain it's, it's the best product we can get. And uh, we, we've done it. I really believe we've done it. We've created a coffee line, 13 great flavors. I'm going to show you three of them. We have K-Cups in all 13 flavors. Here's a Jamaican Me Crazy. It's a, just a really great coffee. Everyone has great logos. It has a brand, the same brand that's on our horses, our trailers. You know that brand means something and we wouldn't put it on here if it wasn't good coffee. We have whole bean. This is a great Honduran blend and uh, it's a whole bean coffee. We have whole bean in all 13 flavors. And then we have a ground coffee. Uh, this is a really great one. My wife and I really like this a lot, loved it. So we named it after our daughter, Hades Blend. Everyone has the packaging and the logo of the show, our brand, and I hope you like it. I, I really believe you will. And we're going to have more flavors coming out soon. We're going to have the pumpkin spices, and then we're going to go to peppermint after that. And please send us your suggestions as well. You can find it at cowboyentrepreneur.shop. Think coffee shop. Cowboyentrepreneur.shop. Thank you so much. So what's it like being a student athlete? Because... You know, you're going to school, you're riding horses. Did you just get up early and go feed your horse? What's a normal, there's no normal. What's a day in the life like? So day in the life would generally be um, like a 5 a.m. workout. We would go down to actually the, the athletic gyms that football players, baseball players, everybody else was in there. Um, this is kind of a funny story off track, but. It's cool. You can't tell, of course, if, if y'all are listening or if you see, I mean, I'm not very tall. And I'm not very athletic built. So I'd walk in the gym and they're like, oh, sweetie, you're lost. And the captain is that way. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be, I don't want to be here, but I'm supposed to be here to work out. And we would have workouts. Um, but that honestly was awesome. And it really helped my riding, thinking about your body and thinking about like, okay, I probably shouldn't have like six Dr. Peppers before going out to practice. Like some water would be great. Um, yeah. And it breaked a lot of those habits that growing up, even as a 4-H kid that you would do, because I, that just wasn't a thing to think about your health and your body. And also with the, the mindset and the mental game that came into it, we would see sports therapists and especially with that mental game reigning that it can be, it, that was fantastic. But you'd get up, go to workouts, go to class. Um, and it, it depended on when your horse was ready. So some girls would feed in the morning, some girls would do the afternoon chores, and then some girls would do the, the evening chores. So the reigning team, generally, our practices were at the end of the day, and we would have evening chores, which is where we fed the horses, we cleaned the stalls, um, we flushed out the wash racks, made sure the arena was in good shape for the girls the next morning, and then they would handle the next morning's chores. So it was definitely a sun up to sundown sort of deal. And then after that, you would have study hall. Um, once you got finished with your practices and with your chores, you'd go to study hall for your required hours to make sure that you were staying to on top of your grades. But they do really good by those girls to get them ready for the real world and to right. make sure that we were pushed to be better. That's so great. I love how it just creates so many great habits. You know, I think that's so, well, I know it is so important to be healthy and mentally and physically, spiritually, just ready to ride that horse because the horse can feel it. You know, oh they're gosh, so yes. in tune and, and it's, it just gives you longevity, but it makes it so much better for the horse as well. Not just yourself. 
definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, they can feel a fly on them. So, of course, they're going to feel me if I'm just an anxious little mess up. <laughs> so, you just <laughs> got to be ready. Yeah, absolutely. You do. You have to be in tune and you have to be, they can feel when you're tired or when you're sluggish. I, I really believe that. And, and, uh, they they kind of mirror that you know and if you want the best performance you have to be ready to give your part too um For sure. so that's cool man i love the gym story and what was a sports psychologist like you know um how did they mentally get you ready so we would talk a whole lot about okay uh if you're anxious about something what's making you anxious let's get to the bottom of it see if we can solve that problem and then if you're still struggling let's talk through different tools on how to manage it because I mean, like for, for me, for example, a lot of times I couldn't even tell you why I'm nervous. I'm just a cat on a tin roof. I have no reason. I just am. And it just, it just is. And I don't enjoy that. I know it's not a good trait, but working with someone and talking through that was fantastic because they have an outside perspective and they could walk you through of, okay, if you're feeling this, here's a tool to help combat that. So that way it's not necessarily going to change how you're feeling, but it can change how you manage that instead of just internalizing it and fighting it and just making a bigger mess than what it needed to be. Man, I love that. I love that so much because, you know, like you say, the perspective is so different and it just makes you feel better in the saddle when you're not worried about all the outside noise. Oh, yes. You know? Oh, yes. You can actually enjoy your ride and enjoy Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, to yeah. keep up a schedule like you have too. You can't do, I mean, it would be hard to do if you're worrying about everything else and if you're not in no. shape and it just snowballs down. Yeah, definitely. That, that's awesome. Man. Thanks for that insight. So, yeah. so let's talk cowgirl magazine. So you were selected 30 under 30. Yes. So can you explain? So what happened? How did they find you? And uh, what was that like? Oh, goodness. So first of all, for me, that's, I'm, I'm very much used to being behind the scenes um, in my job in communications is I love the history of horses and the people and the research. And I'm not used to being on the other side of someone wants to write about, are you sure you want to write, <laughs> write about me? But it it is just awesome to be a part of a group of women um, that, that's so diverse. So the Calvary 30 under 30, um, they just select women under 30 in the Western industry, everything from horse trainers to entrepreneurs to designers and models and people like me who work for associations or different equine or Western businesses. Um, and they're selected based off of what they're contributing to the industry. And I, I'm sure there's even more criteria, but they left it so open to where it, anybody involved with the industry has a chance to apply and to be a part and for a little bit of recognition of, uh, in our industry because there isn't just a whole whole lot of that yeah I think it's great I, I think it's great they promote and, and especially young and up and coming that's so important to do um, especially when they're bringing more people into sure. the industry that's the only way we're going to get better for sure and, for and sure. Uh, so what was that like when they called you or let you, how, how'd they let you know I guess is the first question so here, here's that. That's another funny story. Um, yeah, we were actually awesome. at the World Show back in November in Oklahoma City. So a really good friend of mine um, also works at AQAJ, and her name is um, Megan Nargain Taylor. And we're, we don't live next to each other, so we don't get to talk to each other very often. So I'm acting all weird and jittery and nervous because I'm waiting on my phone call or my email, whether I got it or not. And she's acting all weird and jittery and nervous. And finally, we sit down to lunch one day. I'm like, why are you nervous? And she said, well, I'm waiting to hear if I got selected for that cowgirl 30 under 30. And I was like, stop. You applied to it and didn't tell me. And sure enough, the two of us had both applied and we didn't tell each other. So after that, it was nice to have a friend in, in that waiting process. of yeah. it, it was something that both of us really wanted. Um, and we're super excited about because it is such a cool award and cool. there's a lot of um, ladies that I'd looked up to that were in the past two classes. Another good friend of mine was in the class before, um, AJ O'Boyle, uh, she's a phenomenal photographer and people that I really, really look up to and, and I'm inspired by and have been part of the reason why I do some of the things that I do or take that extra step even when you're tired of nope, it's worth it, keep on, but it, when we finally got our phone calls or we got emails, actually, um, I was sitting in the arena and we were watching a class go and I'm, I think I was dropping off paperwork and was about to have to run back to the office. And I saw the email 
I didn't open it. I sprinted back to see if I can find Megan because I didn't want to open it without her. And she was busy working, doing something else. And um, I opened it. I couldn't resist at that point. I was like, she's not here. I think she's not going to mind. I'm just going to open it and yeah, yeah. See, see what it says. And sure enough, it had a big fat congratulations on there. And it was like five minutes of screaming and excitement. And then in, in the next, it was, okay, we got to go back to work because we've got <laughs> a, another presentation in the arena in like 10 minutes. So that's so cool. So cool. Yes. I'm so glad the Mag Cowgirl Magazine does that. And, and I'm, it's, I think it's so uh, appropriate you found out in the arena. Yes. You know, oh, that's my gosh. Yes. Neat. You know, that's really show. neat. Yes. Yeah, how that rolled I mean, out. They're fantastic. I, I've been getting emails still from them, and it's it's just a dream of, I've, I've loved that magazine for years, and all of the sponsors that are a part of it Wrangler, Durango, uh, Montana Silversmiths. I, these are all companies that I've worn, I have yeah. used for years. And for them to do this for young women I, is incredible. And I'm so thankful. I mean, it, it's, it doesn't feel real. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so great they are because they have been around the industry for so long and they're, they're investing in young women. I think that's so wonderful. So oh gosh, wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so, so you did a little time at Lazy Arena. I did, I yeah. did. And it was time well spent. I, I love the Lazy e Arena and still, I would say a second or a third home with, at this point. Yeah. Each time we so, spent so where's there. Lazy E for people maybe not might not know? Yeah, so Lazy E Arena is actually located in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Um, and that's just north, oh gosh, my directions are failing. I believe just northeast of Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. um, middle of nowhere, in all honesty. It's it's near the town, but you've got to go back in, in the brush to get to it in Oklahoma. Yeah. But it's the most beautiful setting. It's set on the Lazy E Ranch. Um, where they breed racehorses, horses for rodeo, and just a smattering um, of everything that would be quarter horse and a little bit thoroughbred out there. Um, and then they have this massive arena. And for the longest time, it was the largest indoor arena in the world. Now I think there might be one larger in South America, but at least it, this part of the world is the largest indoor arena. Um, that's actually also home to the Cinch Time Event Championships, which is specifically for timed event cowboys. They all compete in five different events. Oh, my brain's feeling me. Think, five different so. events yeah. to see who's the Iron Man cowboy. And it, so cool. it was a lot of fun. So it was a cool. lot of fun. Well, there's so much going on there all the time, it seems. Yes. Yes. They had a wide range of events. We had everything from timed event championships in March um, to red dirt raining. That would be in April, May. And then they would have um, the Little Bridges, National Little Bridges, Rodeo Finals. That is the most insane event I've ever been to. I've been to NFR, the World Show, like American Rodeo. Nothing can touch the Little Bridges Rodeo Finals. And it is for the pure fact that you've never seen a group of kids so happy to be with their horses, with their friends, in one place, running wild through the green hills of Oklahoma. And that was actually my first event that I, I did on site at Lazy E was Little Bridges. I just remember being on a golf cart running through a pasture and you'd have kiddie pools everywhere, but it was a, a, a crapshoot of if the kitty pit, like the little kiddie pool had goats, children or puppies or no telling or a cooler full of sodas as kids ran by. I mean, it was the most ultimate kids rodeo event I've ever been to. Oh, man. So how many kids would show up for this event? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but it, I mean, I'd say there's probably close to a thousand at yeah, that it's point. A they would deal, run, right? um, it's a big deal. It was deal. huge, yeah. huge. They would run three um, rodeo arenas in the Lazy E. So you'd have a calf lane, you would have um, a barrel pattern or a pole pattern on one side, and then you'd have the rough stock arena at the end. So you'd see mamas going from one to the other to the other, just depending on how many kids she had. And where their draw was in the day of just rotating sides to get the videos and to see everybody so cool. go. So cool. Yeah. 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 You know, a thousand people, you know, when you figure that's a lot of people, but then you got parents oh and animals and trailers. It's a big deal. Yes. Big very much deal. so. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Scott will be right back with more. For more information on Scott Knudsen, the Cowboy Entrepreneur, visit us online at cowboyentrepreneur.com. Well, I keep seeing something back there. It looks like a, a trophy. Let's talk about that before yes. we keep going. Can you tell us about yes. that? Yes. 
So uh, another long story, but um, my, uh, she's now four, but my three-year-old Appaloosa mare last year won the um, Appaloosa Reigning Horse Futurity in Fort Worth over at Will Rogers. Thank you. She's, she's a very cool mare and it, she has a fun story herself outside of just winning that. But I, of course, I just beam when I talk about her because I adore that little mare. <laughs> she's awesome. What well, you should. So what's her name? Uh, so... <laughs> Her name is, it, and I know that we had talked about this a little bit, and emailing and whatnot back and forth, but her name is, I hope she's good. <laughs> I so, love it. I love it. It is. It is. It's, I hope she's good. So um, she's actually by Yellow Jersey out of a really nice um, Appaloosa mare. And we, we bought her before she was even weaned off of her mama. So, I mean, I'm months old at this point. Um, the gentleman that I learned how to ride from he was part of the breeding program that produced her and he said you need this mare it's she's just really cute I loved her mama she's out of yellow jersey I mean you're really going to enjoy her so you need to buy her and I had had horses for forever but I always had um, amateur and non-pro horses the ones that were done ready to go and you could hop on literally I, I bought a horse at unseen showed up to the show and went and rode in the class and so the younger side of the game was totally outside of my realm of understanding and out of my experience. So talking with my mother um, about should we buy her or not, she wasn't registered or anything. We were talking about her, we talked about cute names and mom was on the fence about, I don't know if we need to do this. You're not always guaranteed that you're gonna have something to show. And every time we had this conversation, it's why well, I hope she's good. I hope she's good. I hope oh, she's gosh. good. After she bought her, it's I hope she's good. I hope she's good. So mom was trying to come up with fun names and she was doing really fun plays off of yellow jersey's name um and then the mayor's name but nothing just wasn't it just wasn't sticking so i didn't tell her and i just submitted the papers with i hope she's good and i'm like if, if they approve it it was meant to be and that's supposed to be your name and that's just what she's going to be registered sure enough i get him back and i get big old fat i hope she's good on a set of papers i'm like oh mom's gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> but it, it fits her um and i call her hope and that name has, has meant a whole lot more outside of just, you know, registered. Um, of course, had her as a weanling. We weaned her. We brought her home. She spent, spent a lot of time with her when she was a year coming into two. And we were going to send her um, up for training over at Nathan Piper's place in um, oh, Aubrey, Tioga, in the uh, horse country, that mm -hmm. strip down there in Texas. And we go to send her and COVID hit. So I didn't, I didn't, didn't get to send her anywhere. We were stuck because nobody was allowed to move. Nobody was allowed to leave. So she started about two months behind and I sent her up. I literally think the week of my wedding, because I'm like, she's got to go. We're, we're getting married. This is enough stress, me and my husband. So she gets shipped off June, the week of my wedding. And I'm trying to, you know, even focus on the wedding day. And I'm still texting like, how's my little girl? I'm like, it's literally, she was like my child and how much I would check in on her. Um, got started late and then we finally hit her three-year-old year and we were in Florida on vacation with my in-laws and I had a phone call from Nathan that Hope's not acting right something's wrong I don't know what it is she was eating okay but she's just she's not herself I'm like we'll watch her for a bit maybe we'll take her over to the vet and he took her to the vet because he, he of course he's laying eyes on her I can't see her but I, I'm trust I'm trusting Nathan, and he did an amazing job and honestly right. saved her life. Um, he's watching her, so they take her to the vet, and she just wasn't acting okay. It wasn't normal colic; something was wrong, something was weird. And, and colic, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's where horses can't vomit. So if they get a stomach ache or if something's wrong with their di digestive tract, it could kill them because yeah. um, the body can't handle that kind of stress and that kind of pain. So she was burning through pain medication meant to last her six hours in a matter of two and they gave her one more chance they said we're going to medicate her one more time but we need to move her to somewhere surgical because if she burns through this again we're going to run out of options on what to do for her so i get on the phone and they haul her um, down to weems and stevens i think they're in St stephenville i'm not exactly sure where they were located again i'm in florida so i'm sitting on so hard it so tough yeah i mean it is it they're your family and i am i am just broken hearted and totally tore up and i'm balling just following the family around and 
my husband's with me and he's like, it's okay. I, there's nothing we can do. It's she's in the best hands possible, but they hauled mm. her over there. And sure enough, she had already burned through the pain medication by the time that she got um, to the surgical facility. And they said, we're going to save her. We got to go now. And sure enough, um, when they opened her up, she had intralis. Um, and intralis are essentially just massive mineral deposits and stone type structures that form in their gut. She had one that was the size of two softballs um, fused together that was trying to pass through her digestive tract. Um, and then a baseball sized one. So she'd been working and learning and doing fantastic with stones rolling around in her gut and she was still working. I mean, the fortitude of this mare is incredible. It's incredible. I'm getting chills talking about it. I but, know. I know. Uh, I'm sure the audience is too. That's just phenomenal. So what happens? So what happens? So generally speaking, I, I mean, I grew up in a world, and this just goes to show how much equine health and medicine and these vets and how much work they put into this. I grew up in a world where colic surgery, if, if it wasn't a career ender, um, it, it was six months before they could do anything. And they told me, they said, if we're lucky, maybe six weeks. Um, if we're really lucky, really lucky, maybe six weeks. And sure enough, she didn't lose any weight. I mean, I'm getting pictures of her on feed bags and I'm like, she's still just a chunky little thing. Just munching on everything, even still in the hospital, as soon as they could give her food, she was back on her food. I mean, wow. that baby loves to work and loves her job and we bring her back home. She was off six weeks and she was released. So I drive up to see Nathan and we were going to talk through her. The whole goal was to take her to the Appaloosa world because um, that's what she is. And that's what she was. She was bred to do. Right. We sit down and he rides her around and he said, I think I can do it. I think I can get her ready. If, if you want to throw some cards out on the table and take a shot, what are we going to lose? I mean, she can go and if she if she's not feeling right we won't do it and wow. just why not at this point why not yeah. I, i'm lucky to have her alive so we did i entered on the literal last day and if anybody from the apple horse club or the rainers is watching again i'm really sorry <laughs> and appreciate y'all answering my questions but we got her entered and we took her up and this was her first show ever she had never gotten out before that point wow and sure enough um we did the hack and the snap a bit and she won it and I'm sitting there just shaking. And I mean, like shaking her entire run. It's like watching your kid go to preschool. It's, I really want you to behave and not bite the teacher. <laughs> wow. Well, just her mental spirit and her heart to do that after that kind of surgery. That's, that's amazing. She's incredible. That's incredible. I mean, she's been a fun story from start to finish from I hope she's good. And then the, yeah, yeah to that. Pictures. So, so what was more nerve wracking? Was it the pageants? Was it when you're riding and you're competing, or was it watching your horse? Oh, watching her a yeah. thousand percent. Isn't that funny? Because <laughs> it's it, especially when it's that's that mental game. It's out of your control. There's nothing yeah. I can do about it from the stands. I like yeah. sit and stress myself silly, and yeah. you know, even when I'm riding, there's there's some semblance I can do something about this and I put in the work right. I can do something and when you're watching somebody else you love and care about it's a full-on I I'm gonna puke don't sit near me it's like, <laughs> you need that sports psychologist to come sit with you while you're watching your horse yeah can you go hold my hand Sarah like, <laughs> I can, I oh my goodness how cool is that so what's next for her um, I'm really hoping I actually got to ride her for the first time myself about a month ago. Wow. And naturally I, I came down there and I thought I had my boots in, in the truck, in the trailer. I had spurs, but no boots. And I'm like, can I please still ride? I'll be in my tennis shoes, but I just really want to ride her. And sure yeah. enough, and she is amazing, but I'm really hoping that I'll get to show her this summer for her four-year-old year. And awesome. she's just fun. Awesome. That's so great. That's such a great story. You know, that's why I love horse stories so much because the horses, they're amazing animals, but and like your horse, you know, to do that is, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and, and, and like you said, with the medicine and veterinarians and the way the clinics work now, it's so important and we need so many more of them. Yes. You know, the, the large animal vet and oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I mean, they did, they saved her life and it, it wasn't a matter of, um, oh, uh, the receptionist called me. It was no, I had the surgeon calling me 
and giving me updates on her the moment she went into surgery, the moment she came out of surgery. Oh, great. And I, I and thank goodness, because I, I was about to just hop on a plane out of Orlando myself. And I, I think my think, husband yeah. was about, <laughs> <laughs> he was wore out too. He's like, I don't know, but this woman right now is out of hand. I was definitely out of hand, but yeah. it, it, it is. I, I don't have kids of my own yet. So the horses that I have and the bonds that I've, I've forged with them, they're, they're definitely family. Yeah, that's so cool. And that's when you ride that horse, that horse knows that. And he's going to perform yes. as hard as she can for you. That's so oh my cool. goodness, yes. So cool. So let's talk to American Quarter Horse Association. So you were an yes. intern and then you you became a full-time communications liaison. So how did that happen? Did you just say, I'm, I, want, I like the place or what, what happened? So I was 15 and my, I, my trainer had told me that I could do anything in the world, but I couldn't be a horse trainer. I, I was forbidden <laughs> from being a horse trainer. Yeah. I, That's awesome. I don't know why he said that, but I don't either. I think, I think he knew. I think he knew that with his body and how fast he broke down, and he knew how much I tried at school and all these other interests that I had. Maybe he had an idea that there was something else that I was supposed to be doing, or I don't know. But whatever it is, he said, "I want you to go on to do something." That if you still really, really want to do it, we can talk about you coming back. I still talk to him on the phone often. I call him King Terry. He's, he's, he's very, very much part of the family. Um, cool. But he said, you need to go on to do something. And then if you still want to, then we'll talk about it. But I said, okay, what's the next closest thing that I can do that's going to get me around horses every day where I don't have to be apart from it? And I'm like, go work for the association. Okay, well, I'm going to pick the best one. And then in my mind that that was AQHA and it's it's definitely one of the best places to be between the members and the horses and the history and I love my job I love my job and so it, cool. it makes it feel like it's not work isn't that great because you were just saying that about the horses now you have a job yes. to do that in, and and that's so cool so what does a communication liaison do so specifically um what I do is a lot of writing and I also love to write um, I've, I've been a bookworm and a writer my whole life. I've loved English and anything to really avoid math. I'm, I'm not kidding when I say I hate math. I'm terrible that sounds at familiar. It. <laughs> <laughs> right? it, it's not my thing. I'm like, okay, opposite of that, writing. I, I can I can stomach writing. So what I do is a lot of writing. I'm press releases, media relations, and then we actually go to shows and we help assist with scripting. We help with event planning, and it, it's. A multifaceted job in the sense of my day today is not the same every day. And it's awesome because you get to meet some of the coolest people in the world. I mean, I'm getting to meet you because a oh, lot of come this on, too. Man. I mean, it's, <laughs> hey, I feel the same. I'm just glad you're on the show. Yeah. It is like you get to meet some awesome, awesome people and you still get to bear on horses. And yeah. it, it's just the perfect combination of, I'm really getting paid for this. Like, y'all oh, yeah, sure, I feel like I'm just kind of freeloading, having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So so do you, you travel a lot or is it a little, or is it kind of, how, how does that work your travel schedule? Yeah, so specifically I'll travel for AQHA produced events. Um, so my team also assists with AQHA convention. And putting that all together with the different events and the banquets and the meetings that goes on and then um we'll have the vrh worlds at, at the lazy e so it's like going back home when i get to go in the summer me, um, for the me. versatility ranch course yes sir um and then we'll have youth world and then the select world show in the world show coming up in the fall so busy so, busy time yes yes busy it's times. it's the best <laughs> <laughs> isn't that great i love being busy and working and it just it just yes. makes everything so much better. Yeah. Yes, very much so, so. So so writing. So what do you write when you're at when you're at work? What are you writing about? Um, it really just depends. Uh, depending on what's going on news wise in the association, um, mm -hmm. and then I do a lot of press releases covering like, hey, this is coming up, or your your um, entry deadlines coming up, or this race is coming up, and making sure that information is out there and available to members. And then that all of the information that we are publishing to the best of our abilities is factually correct and done so yeah. in an efficient manner. So, wow. Wow. That's so cool. So cool. Yes. Cause there's so many horses in the association and so many, so many different disciplines. Yes. 
Yes, definitely multifaceted. You've got show people, you've got English, um, racing, ranching. It's it's really cool, especially at convention, which we're just coming back from, to see them all come together and with the common goal in mind of you know protecting the integrity of the breed and then the welfare of the horse. And I, they're very passionate people. And it's so exciting to see people be that passionate about anything yeah. in general, yeah, but absolutely. especially with something that I have a shared passion for. It's it's a lot of fun to be around them, and it's a lot of fun to see what can be accomplished when you get a group together that that has the same idea. That's awesome. That's awesome. Common passion for for one of oh, it's just nothing better. Just that positive yeah. energy. You can just get so yes. much done. So yes, much done. Absolutely. So how do you see it changing as far as the industry and the communication to trainers and horse owners or the person that just has one horse as a member? You know, so you're riding, you know, we got the magazine, yeah. which is beautiful and online, but what do you see in the future? Uh, really more communication and then mm -hmm. tailoring that to the different people um, that's out there in the industry. I mean, you can't say, hey, you need to get, you know, you're starting breeding reports in because not everybody breeds every year it's you've got to make sure that you've got the right message for the right audience and that it's something that they're going to read you can't go and use the same means of communication that we did honestly even six years ago when I first joined AQHA as an intern uh, people don't always check the website not everybody has access to email not everybody's looking at social media I, I mean you've got to be creative on how you share this message and to make sure that it's the right message with how how you're sharing it with people right. so in the future I, I just think that there's going to be different ways for us to keep contact and then for people to get information i mean in a way that benefits them and that's useful because i mean for instance i my father-in-law he he ranches um if i were to text him and tell him that he say um owed me fifty dollars He's not going to see that text probably for another week or if, you know, it's, you got right. to figure out how to reach them where they're at. Right, right. Well, it, it is because like you say, not everybody has email or text or magazines or mm -hmm. website. Plus everybody is so busy, you know, yes. you, you, do you send it out multiple times? You send out one time one way, then one time another way, because it, it People are so busy and, you know, we have the, the, the breeding operation and we're trying to keep right. up with it. And, yes. and uh, it's, a, it's, a, I appreciate how much y'all communicate because that really helps us. You yes. Know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you're mentioning the breeding operation. I don't know how these larger breeders, I have a whole new appreciation for that. I'm just breeding. I have an Einstein's revolution mare and I'm breeding her this year. Nice. And I have never been so stressed out in my life or looking for signs of attitude from, from an animal at all my life between keeping her under lights and the work that goes into it. I mean, yeah. all those breeders, uh, two thumbs up because I don't know how <laughs> you do that in multiple horses. I'm struggling with my one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, like you say, systems in place, you know, and you got to love what you do and for sure. For sure. So you on your own, you and your husband have a cattle operation. Just getting and, and started. Cow -cow. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell us about that. I think it's Raptor J. Is that correct? Yes, correct. So, uh, and by just getting started, he'd, he'd had cattle long before me that he had run with his father and with his siblings. Um, and they all still run, run some together, but we actually um, now have a little bit of land and we're working on getting moved out there at, at some point in the future to Put it all together into one unit of me being the horse girl and liking to have little foals running around and then him being cattle guy and wanting to get um, his cows on his own place and just kind of combine those operations of what we've admired for years through the different the ranches and the breeders that we've been around and just friends with and excited to get that started for our own and to take part and get in on the work. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Y'all have a vision. You're executing the vision. And so what kind of cattle? Uh, they actually have um, Angus um, cows. And then they've been breeding just kind of to a smattering of bulls. Here lately, it's been Charlet bulls, a good friend of ours. They have Charlets. And I uh, love seeing the little smoky calves running around. Yeah, there's, there's nothing better. Yeah, there's nothing so better. cute. Yeah, that's so cool. So cool. So you're going to have baby horses, baby calves running around yes. and 
That's a good lie. That's a great oh yeah, lie. makes great for lie. fun springs. I'm excited. Yeah. So so I was reading on your bio. You volunteer a lot, and and uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how do you pick some place to volunteer? Because I love that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. The biggest thing, and at least when it came to um, picking, is I just go back and I sit and think of all the different people who made an impact on me when I was a kid, or or think about if somebody didn't, what I would have needed at that age or, or at that point of interest or the kind of person that I would have liked to make an impact on me. So specifically, um, I had volunteered with our local county 4-H um, with horse judging and bring them around horses. We also did a couple of horse camps with um, the New Mexico State um, horse specialist and did a whole lot of fun stuff when it came to equine education and outreach and letting these kids know, I mean, you can watch these cowboy movies and you can watch Yellowstone in 1883 and and that could be part of your life that you can integrate yeah. yourself as a part of that history and here's the tools to do it if you'd like to and you don't have to feel stuck yeah. and playing cowboys come be a cowboy yeah I love that I love that you got me fired up because uh, yes. I love it there's nothing better than just going out and, and, and mess with your horses and and, and like oh, your yeah. friend said you don't have to be a trainer you can come out here and own a no. horse so you can do photography or you can ride there's so many facets inside our industry and it's a welcoming oh, industry nice. it's getting more so I believe yes absolutely I mean a kid like me I have no reason there, there was no pedigree built into me to want to be a cowgirl other than I saw it I saw a horse and I just said I want that and there was fantastic influences at pivotal moments in my life um, from my family, the, the people who taught me how to ride, the people who taught me how to write and to love books and to love reading, and the people who taught me how to put those two things together of you don't have to choose. And Courtney Dehoff is, is another um, woman that I am so inspired by with her whole fancy lady cowgirl idea of you don't have to choose these things. You can be all 10 shades of whatever you want to be. And Absolutely. if it makes you happy and if you can figure out how to put them together you're gonna have a lot of fun yeah that's so i'm, I'm so glad she says that because i agree 100 percent. there's so many things to do yes. you can do whatever you want to do and it just takes that one opportunity and if it's not there you can find it yourself you know oh, yes. you found your way in and now you're you're recruiting so many people in the industry um like that little girl hanging on the rails earlier we were talking about so important yes. so important the outreach part Yes, Cowgirl, Cowgirl Magazine had asked us, um, I'm, I'm struggling to remember the exact wording of the question, but it was something of, where do you see Cowgirls being in the next 50 years? And right now we're seeing a huge change in the industry of what Cowboys and Cowgirls look like, where they come from and, and how they choose to express those feelings inside of us that you can't always put into words by feeling connected to a hat or to boots or to horses. I mean, it, they're indescribable feelings. I nearly almost akin it to, it feels like you're coming home to your family. You yeah. can't quite put your finger on why it makes you feel good, but it does. Yeah. And the only thing that I could think of for my answer is, you know, we're, we're breaking that mold. We're breaking the mold of what a cowboy looks like, but isn't that what we were from the get-go? The cowboy broke the mold of what was supposed yeah. to be the normal at that time. And we were born to do that. So. It, we're just going to continue on and roll with the punches and change with the times and everybody's more than welcome yeah i love that and, and they are it just makes our industry stronger for sure oh my gosh, and yeah. yeah it's so much fun to too, see somebody new that wants to intern like you did or or uh, yes. that help us you know it's so much fun to see them advance in the career whatever they choose um, yes yeah and, and aqha does a, a great job of you know um marketing our our industry, you know, yes. and, and uh, but it takes everyone, you know, it, it, it takes you at an event to go and talk to someone, you know, and it takes me oh, yeah. to talk to someone. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think one thing that people can struggle with is, I mean, oh, they're just a naturally friendly person. And I mean, it's, it's getting that in your head of, and getting past those insecurities of, well, that person looks busy. They don't want to talk to me or, or you know, it, it's that, I don't want to say it's that fight, but it's pushing yourself outside of your boundaries to uh -huh. be that person that you needed. 
instead right. of just staying in your own lane sometimes. And I'm not saying go and unsolicited advice, yeah. <laughs> advice of that kind of things, but just to go be that friend and to start that conversation and for people to feel like they, that they're seen and that they're heard and that they're part of something more than themselves, which we all feel, but it's nice to have that little bit of a nudge of like, yep, you're thinking right. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your advice? So someone that's not in the industry um, and they're like listening to the show or watching you right now, they're like, I think I might want to try something in the industry. What would be your advice? Just from Kyla, this is what you should do. There, there's been so many pieces of fantastic advice that I've received throughout the years, but I think the one that sticks with me, and it doesn't matter the situation, even if you're matter than the dickens because something went wrong or you're, you got a, a blowout on your truck and you're on the side of the road and your granola bars are all gone and chick-fil-a <laughs> was closed like it, it, it doesn't matter how hard it is but you can learn something from anyone anytime and it doesn't matter like it just it doesn't matter the situation it's you've got to look at it from the perspective of okay i'm, I'm supposed to learn something from this and i'm it, i'm supposed to share it it's not only i'm supposed to learn it's, I'm supposed to share it. It's knowledge is just that constant flow and taking advice and learning from people is a constant flow. Absolutely. That's great. That's beautiful. You know, I, that's so true. You know, I feel like I learned something every day, you know, oh, yeah. I, I didn't have a big palette to start with. So that's probably, you know, something <laughs> I should be doing, but um, you know, it, it is changing so much, just like you were talking mm -hmm. about getting the word out from the association. It, it changes so much. And I think now it's going so much faster, the change. Yes. It, it's really an advantage for somebody who's coming in because they, they don't know. They can respect the past, you know, for sure. We all do. But they can also help us with some change and to get better. Oh, for sure. For sure. I, the, the history of horsemen and women in general is something that, I, I mean, <sighs> I'm obsessed with it, for lack of a better term. Any book that I can get my hand on that's written over cowboys or the history of the breed um, or anything that Jim Jennings um, has written in the past over, they read, they read Good Horses and the history of the American Quarter Horse and the people are the first, you know, 50 years of it. All of that history is so important and it's so exciting and it's also even more exciting because you can learn from all of that and end up 50 years ahead from where they were on into the next one and we can take so much from that there's so much appreciation that we have for the people that built where we are and then just use it to continue forward and onward. Yeah, I'm so glad you said it. it's it, just like what your trainer friend said uh, about you wanting to ride a reining horse he said you got to understand the book and the rules before you play yes. and just like learning the history it, it makes it makes it so much better when you come into the to the industry to understand it to appreciate oh it. Oh my gosh, yes. Hey, Kyla, thank you so much for uh, sharing those great stories and, and being an inspiration for people that want to get into the industry and, and, and helping all of us with the American Quarter Horse Association. We really appreciate everything you do. Of course. No, thank you for having me. It's always exciting to get to talk horses and to get to share it with other people. Oh, I love it so much. I, it's in my blood. And, I'll, and congratulations on your horse and the trophy. That's so great, especially your first you. one, man. That's a big deal. And I know there's going to be a lot more coming. So thank you so thank much you. for being on the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all the great sponsors of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show. If you or your business is interested in being a sponsor of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, please call our office at 830-992-1786 or visit our website, cowboyentrepreneur.com. Hi, I'm Scott Knudsen, host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show, heard on KCAA, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific. I'd like to talk to you about something I'm very passionate about. Those that know me know I love my coffee. In the morning, afternoon, and even late in the evening, I enjoy a good cup of coffee almost any time of the day. Now, my team at the Cowboy Entrepreneur Show has been working for several months on creating and introducing our own brand of coffee. We wanted to make sure that we got it just right. We don't want to put our name on anything unless we're 100% certain that it's the best product available, and we've finally done it. We have created a wonderful line of coffees, 13 fantastic flavors offered in whole bean, ground, and K-cups, any way you like to brew your coffee. Now, each of our coffees carries our brand, 
the very same brand that we put on our horses, our trailers, and our chaps. So you know that this is a quality product. And we only use 100% Arabica beans, the very best beans available. Just listen to some of these wonderful blends and flavors. Jamaican Me Crazy, Honduran San Marcos, Chocolate Cherry Amaretto, Breakfast Blend, and my very favorite, Haley's Blend. A coffee so good, we named it after my daughter. You can order these coffees today by going online to cowboyentrepreneur.shop. That's cowboyentrepreneur.shop. And if you order today, you can get an extra 10% off your final purchase just by entering the promo code COWBOY on checkout. Remember, that's promo code COWBOY for an extra 10% off. Just go to cowboyentrepreneur.shop to order your coffee today.